he was a recent graduate student here. Um, I think what it's been like three years now, or two. Uh, years. Yes. yes, three years. Yes. Um, he was a student of Dr. Wing, who's also here right now. Hi. And um, he's going to talk about some of his research um, on strong asymptotics of planar orthogonal polynomials um, with the Gaussian weight, uh, perturbed by a finite number of point charges. Um, so, okay, it's all yours. Uh, yes. Okay. So uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Nancy and the Fudong uh, for inviting me to present our work. So uh, this talk is based on the joint work with my PhD advisor, Sunya Pli. And uh, today I, I will start with a two-dimensional Coulomb gas model. And then I will list uh, some examples. So uh, the third part, that's the main part. So I will talk about the two cases. Uh, the first one is for the Gaussian weight perturbed by one point charge. And the second case is like general, generalize our uh, results to Gaussian weight perturbed by multiple point charges. In the main part, I will talk about uh, the Zegel curves and then uh, to show how, how, how can you uh, construct the riemann hilbert problem. Uh, lastly, that's uh, the, the, the final result, the strong products of orthogonal polynomials. Okay. So uh, two-dimensional Coulomb gas model. In the two-dimensional Coulomb gas model, we consider n particles as a system of point charges with the same sign. They are located at points zj in the uh, complex plane. So because they have the same sign, so they will repel each other. Um, at the same time, we add an external potential Q such that in the scaling limit, uh, almost all the particles are confined to a compact set. And this compact set we call the droplet. Um, the scaling limit means we increase the number of particles. We also increase our external potential. Okay, so the probability distribution on normal matrices space is given by the following formula. Here on um, the Zn, capital Zn in the front of the prefecture, it is uh, uh, the normalization constant such that the whole thing, it is a probability uh, measure. And uh, this capital Zn also known as the partition function. So it is a constant, but we say it is a function, but because it is a function of some parameters, therefore we call it is a partition function. Uh, the Vandermon term describes the inner potential and the exponential term describes the external potential. Uh, here is a measure because we consider two dimensional Coulomb gas model. So the measure it is, uh, the standard, the big measure on the plane. Okay, so this is the two-dimensional Coulomb gas model. The relation between um, Coulomb gases and uh, planar orthogonal polynomials is given by uh, Heine's formula. So Heine's formula says the average characteristic polynomial is the planar orthogonal polynomial. So if you see um, the right-hand side of Heine's formula, before you take the expectation, it is a random polynomial because our ZJs are random, right? But if you take the uh, average over the given probability distribution, it becomes uh, um, the planar orthogonal polynomial, so which satisfies the following uh, orthogonality conditions, okay? So um, we are interested in the orthogonal polynomials because uh, if you want to start, because we talk about uh, the Coulomb gas model, right? If you want to study some uh, statistical property of the Coulomb particles, then there is uh, several things can relate it to uh, orthogonal polynomials. Uh, for example, the correlation kernel, uh, the average density of the uh, Coulomb particles, so they can relate it to orthogonal polynomials. That's why we want to study the orthogonal polynomials first. Okay, so in the orthogonality condition, um, uh, the measure, uh, this Q of Z, that's the, um, the uh, external potential, and our orthogonal polynomial that's monic with degree n, therefore we have the Hn, it is the norming constant. Okay, so this is for uh, planar orthogonal polynomials. 
So here we have uh, several examples. So the first one, it is a study by Ginebra in 1965, where uh, Q of Z, the external potential, is given by uh, Gaussian weight. For Ginebra ensemble, you can see from the right-hand side of the figure, so almost all the particles are confined to the uh, unit disk. This is in the scaling limit. So, but, but you still can see that there, is, that there are a finite number of charges outside the, the unit disk. For Gini Brown ensemble, the corresponding uh, orthogonal, the strong symptotics of the orthogonal polynomial is given by monomial, so z to power n. Therefore, all the zeros are at the origin. Okay, so this is for uh, Gini Brown ensemble. And in 2012, um, Balov, Butula, Lee, McLaughlin, they studied uh, the one, uh, the external potential given by Gaussian weight, but they, they add one's um, logarithmic singularity at A. So here, uh, Tc, that's a critical point, and T, that's the ratio between small n and the capital N. So if T uh, less than TC, that, that would be belong to the, 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 if you see the three figures, that, that's uh, uh, the left one. It is called the pre-critical. And if T is equal to TC, that's the critical case. And the last it is a post-critical case. Okay. Well, yes. Um, if you don't mind, the gray area is the place where the, the zeros are distributing or down the can you repeat what do you mean? So the, the gray area, what is the gray area representing? It's where the... Um, Greater? No, the gray area. So the, this figure that you've drawn, there's a, a line segment thing in between. I don't then there's this gray planar area. The whole thing. So what is the gray representing? Ah, that's, ah, okay. So that's, uh, that's a shady, the, the shady region that's for the droplet. Yeah, okay. I, haven't, I haven't mentioned that yet. <laughs> okay, that's, that's good. So if you see the three figures, the shaded region, that's the, the droplet, and the solid line, that's where zeros are. That's a limiting uh, locus of the zeros for the corresponding uh, orthogonal polynomials. Yes, so they studied the strong symptotics of the, the, the three cases, the orthogonal polynomials. Okay, so this is for the uh, second uh, case. And uh, the third one is uh, given by um, uh, th th this formula, Q, Q of Z. Okay, so we have this formula. Uh, th this model uh, first introduced by Balof and Mercy in 2013, and later on in 2018, Botola, Elias, Ribello, and Grava, they obtained the strong symptotics uh, for the critical case. And in 2019, Diano and the same, they obtained the partition function for these cases. So if you see uh, the Q of Z, it is a default symmetry, okay? So if you rewrite this Q by Q tilde, so you can see uh, the Q tilde is still related to Gini Brown ensemble. Uh, this, uh, this Gini Brown ensemble, therefore you have the droplet centered at T with the radius TC. So also you can see the three pictures that's for the pre-critical, critical, and post-critical. So the, 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 the line it is for the three different droplets. Okay, so this is for uh, the third example. And the people also want to study for general Q, okay? So for general Q, the first result obtained by Hadma and Weiman in 2017. So they assume this Q the external potential Q, it is uh, uh, have some uh, uh, general assumption like uh, Q, it is a real analytic and uh, uh, grows sufficiently large at infinity and so on. So based on the general setting, they obtain this strong symptotics for the orthogonal polynomials. But, but the thing is, their formula holds for Z outside the droplet. So if you see the previous all the figures, you, you can see almost all the particles are inside the droplet. Only finite number of uh, uh, particles outside the droplet, but their formula doesn't say anything inside the droplet. As I, I mentioned, studying um, orthogonal polynomials, that's the first step to study the uh, uh, um, statistical property of the Coulomb particles, for example, the uh, correlation, correlation kernel. So even you understand the orthogonal polynomials, it is still a challenge to, to compute the different uh, uh, property of the Coulomb, uh, Coulomb particles. Uh, in 2018, um, Amura, uh, Kang, and so they studied the, the, the normal 
a random matrix model, uh, insertion of one point charge. And in 2020, Ackman, Bian, and Kang, they studied the visual type random matrix model. So for, for the uh, uh, visual type um, a random matrix model, the orthogonal polynomial are related to Laguerre po polynomials. Okay. So this is uh, for uh, some examples I want to show. But for us, we want to study uh, the external potential Q is given by uh, the following explicit formula. So Q of Z is given by uh, Gaussian weight, and we put a finite number of point charges. The fixed charges at AJ, uh, the logarithmic singularity at AJ. And, and you can see we do uh, here, CJs are non zero real numbers greater than negative one, and all the AJs are distinct points inside the disk, but not at the origin. Okay. So if you see from the, uh, the, the external potential Q, if N goes to infinity, so this Q will be go to uh, the Gaussian weight. So that's why we say it is uh, uh, perturbation to Gini Brown ensemble. And also I would like to say uh, for nu equal to one, we don't put the uh, A1 at the origin, but if nu greater than one, uh, one of the AJ can be put at the origin, okay? So uh, because we write down the explicit formula for external potential Q, therefore uh, we rewrite the planar uh, orthogonal polynomial, the orthogonality conditions. So where we have the, um, the function W of Z, and this W of Z is given by the product of Z minus AJ to power CJ. And because we choose CJ, it is non-zero real numbers, therefore, uh, this W of Z is not well defined yet, so we have to choose all the branch cuts for uh, for all the uh, branch points A J, right? So for new equal to one, we choose the branch cut of Z minus A one to power C one to be the uh, segment zero to A one, um, but for new greater than one, we, we choose the branch cuts as uh, union of the rays. So I, I draw the, the picture. So we have the, 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 the figure it is for uh, new equal to three. So we have A1, A2, and A3. And in the middle, we have zero. The re is given by uh, from zero to A1 and follow the same argument to infinity. So we have B1, B2, B3, that's a branch cut. Okay. What, what do you do if two of them have the same argument? What? What do you do if two of them have the same argument, like a one? We don't. We don't do. We don't do that because I mentioned um, it is a distinct point, right? No, sure, but say a two is um, a one times five. I don't know. They're all. I mean, I guess they're on the disk. A one times. We, we 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 choose a different argument. So, so just that. a little bit different. Okay. No. Yeah. Yes. A little bit different. Cannot overlap. So I, I will uh, explain our results first uh, from the case of new equal to one. Uh, so this figure, it is uh, for uh, new equal to one and we fix the C1 equal to one and we choose A1 uh, is less than uh, one, so inside. So the shady region, so you can see uh, the droplet is still the unit disk. And uh, um, uh, the, 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 the orange solid line, that's the limiting locus and the red dot, that's A1. So we also plot uh, um, the uh, degree 100, also on a polynomial, polynomial, so you can see uh, all, almost all the zeros align on the limiting locus. So this is for A less than one. So similarly, we also uh, deal the one for A1 greater than one. So this is what we call the pre-critical case. Okay, so similarly, we have the limiting locus and we have the zeros for uh, 100 and uh, the, the red dots as for 600. So you can, you can see as n goes to, goes to infinity, all, your, all the zeros are converged to the limiting locus. Indeed, I, I say we, we have the picture, this is for uh, fixed C1. Uh, th this picture also holds for scale C. So if you choose C is one over n, then all the zeros also converge to the same, uh, same curve. So this is what we call um, the zeros and also the limiting locus behaves 
uh, we have uh, this continuously at c equal to zero because if you choose c1 equal to zero, that's exactly the Gini Brown ensemble. Uh, for Gini Brown ensemble, we understand all the zeros at the origin, but for here, you can see all the zeros and no more at the origin. However, if you do c not uh, like uh, decay algebraically, not as one over n, you want to decay faster, like exponential uh, small. Therefore. Uh, it is uh, all the zeros normal at the, or the, 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 the limiting locus. So, so they will combine, uh, they, they will converge into the inner curves. So here we have the picture. It is for C1 equal to exponential to negative eta n. So we choose eta equal to 0 0.4 and 0 0.2. So you can see the eventually uh, inside uh, the, the limiting locus, so, so some other curve. Okay, so how, how can we obtain such a result? So first, uh, we prove the following lemma. So we, we talk about the area integral and contour integral. So if you see this lemma, the left-hand side, it is corresponding to the planar solvent polynomial because that's the area measure. And the right-hand side, it is for dz and uh, gamma, that's a contour integral. So we prove uh, here the, the integral contour, it is a simple closed curve, enclosing zero and a1 counterclockwise. So we, we prove this statement by, by observing the following um, uh, calculations. We define um, chi of z, and then we take the uh, anti-holomorphic derivative. And then we, we realized um, uh, th this anti-holomorphic derivative exactly match uh, the um, planar orthogonal polynomial part. Therefore, we can obtain the, the, we can apply the uh, Green's theorems to, to obtain the uh, contour integral. Uh, at this moment, we only can say this integral contour it is a simple closed curve enclosing zero and a one, and we don't know where it is. But from the numerical uh, class, we can see there is some curve. So we want to use that curve to update our gamma. Therefore, we have to construct. Uh, uh, the, the particular curve. And that particular curve, we, we say it is the uh, Zegel curve, the Zegel curve. So a question here. Um, yes. So the curve essentially, this, this lemma works yes. essentially generically for a given simple closed curve enclosing zero and A1, but you're gonna choose gamma appropriately so that you can do things later or? Uh, yes, so this is, uh, we just know it is like this. So it's a simple closed curve enclosing zero and A1, but we don't know where it is. I see. So, okay. Okay. Yes, yes. So then we want to use the exactly the uh, Zegel curve to update this uh, gamma. Um, but when we say Zegel curve, that's not the original Zegel curve. So if you, the Zegel curve itself was introduced by uh, Zegel in 1924. Uh, so if you see e to power z, there is no zeros at all. But if you do the truncate it, you do tail expansion and choose the first n plus one term and end some scaling. So you can see uh, all the zeros are confined to the particular curve. This particular curve we call Zegel curve. For us, we also call it a Zegel curve, but we should call it generalized Zegel curve. Okay. And how, how do we construct a, such a curve? So we define phi of z, it is uh, the um, maximum of uh, log module z and the real part of a1 by z plus l1. So uh, phi of z, it is a piecewise analytic function. And uh, we also define the two domains, so omega one and omega zero. So omega one, that's the bounded domain, and omega zero, that's a complement, that's uh, our unbounded domain. Uh, we choose our uh, L1. So L1, that's also known as the Robbins constant. So uh, we, we choose such L1, such that our A1, that's on the Zegel curve. So this A1, is, uh, uh, we have the freedom to choose. If you, if you see the, the definition of phi of Z, so only uh, the parameter we have two, right? We have A1 and L1. So A1 is given and only L1 is not given. So we have to choose L1. So if you see the 3D plot, so we have log of Z, that's the orange, the, the, the part, and also we have the plane. So you can increase your L1 or decrease your L1, right? So which cause the bounded domain may shrink or expand, right? So you can choose this, the particular L1 such that A1 that's on the boundary. So we choose 
the particular uh, L1, uh, then we have this Zeko curve. And we want to use this Zeko curve to modify our gamma, okay? Uh, so if you're familiar with the Riemann-Hilbert problem, and you need the three in, uh, ingredients to set up your Riemann-Hilbert, right? So you need to know the uh, oriented contour, and you want to know the jump conditions, and also you want to you, you have to understand the, the symptotic behavior. And now we have uh, all the three in, uh, ingredients. Therefore, we can set up our Riemann-Hilbert uh, problem. So here, uh, mu one it is uh, from the uh, the contour integral, and uh, here gamma one zero that's uh, our uh, Zeko curve I just construct, and then we have the symptotic behavior. So other than that, our y it is holomorphic matrix function. So for this Riemann-Hilbert problem, and uh, the solution it is exists and unique. And for one way entry, it is the orthogonal polynomial. That's why if we want to study the orthogonal polynomial, we can use the Riemann-Hilbert problem uh, to obtain, uh, uh, to just uh, after you do a lot of transformation, and then you can, st you can study the one way entry. So that's, uh, that will be give you, uh, th that will give you the, the, the final result. Uh, I, I will, uh, so the method is called nonlinear speed descent. Um, I will skip all the technical details for that. We will also mention that also. Okay, so then I just come to the final result for the first part. So if A1 is greater than one and for fixed non-zero C1 greater than negative one, so we have a beta equal to one over A1 because this is for the pre-critical case. And we have three different formulas. So in omega zero, we have one formula and in omega one, we have another formula. So if omega, omega zero and omega one, we have different formula, right? If they meet, they will create the, the, the zeros. So that's where we put the Zeko curve and uh, that's for uh, omega zero and omega one. And on the particular point, so normally the formula will be a little bit different. And here, uh, uh, P and inside D beta, it is come from the local parametrics for the uh, Riemann-Hilbert problem. And you can see uh, we have the local coordinate and we have the spatial function. It is related to parabolic cylinder function. Uh, this is for post, uh, uh, this is for pre-critical case. And uh, for post-critical case, it is related, the, the spatial function, it is related to a uh, Cauchy transform for some function. And uh, for, critical, critical, uh, for critical case, uh, the, the, the spatial function uh, related to Pendleton fall. Okay, so this is for the case of mu equal to one. And uh, uh, later on, we want to general our results to new, greater than one. Uh, I will show the, uh, the, the figures first. So from the figures, you can see we also have the droplet. It is uh, the unit disk. But, uh, but the figures, it is for new equal to three. So we choose C1, C2, C3 equal to one. And uh, the, uh, the, the red dots, that's for A1, A2, A3. So you can see our A1 can um, locate it on the, uh, the boundary and also can uh, locate it at the the straight the straight line. So the difference is so for for the uh, for the left hand side of the the figures which is a one a two a three so the almost the same distance to to the origin. But if if you see the right hand side the a one the a two uh, they are a little bit closer to the origin. Therefore you have to uh, they behave different. So they are on the straight line. Okay, so we want to do similar thing. So uh, the first step, we also want to prove the, from the area integral to contour integral. But for here, we don't have the clear formula for the integral, but we have the integral representation for mu to m of z, okay? So also we have a, 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 a contour here. So gamma, it is a simple closer curve enclosing every point, uh, the, the, the singularities. So, so zero, A1, A2, and A nu, counterclockwise. And uh, uh, then we want to uh, do a similar thing to construct uh, some uh, Zeggo curves. So therefore, uh, we define phi of z to be a maximum of log of z and the real part uh, aj bar z plus lj. Right, so we have a uh, 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 new plus one um, 
functions in this theory. Then we have the, uh, the Robbins constant, all the Robbins constant. And then we are not only find the one Robin constant, so we have to find the L1, L2, and, and the so on, right? So if you see the, the following picture, so we just plot, uh, this is for two points for nu equal to two. We plot a two plane, and then you have to uh, uh, increase or decrease your L1, L2. Therefore, you have the multiple several curves. And uh, how, how to do this? Uh, before that, I have to define two more uh, domains, so uh, not two more, uh, nu plus one. So we have omega j, it is uh, the bounded domain, and omega zero, that's outside, that's an unbounded domain. Okay, so uh, in this year we proved uh, the following uh, theorem. So we say uh, there exists the unique set of real numbers, uh, L1, L2, and so on, such that all the ages are on the boundary of omega j and the j is from one to new. So that's a condition to choose uh, all the Robbins constant and uh, how to do this. Okay, so first, the, the initial step. So we just choose all the LJ, uh, they are same. They are as uh, log of AJ minus AJ square. And we choose J from one to new. So all the AJ, they are same. And, and the picture, it is for three, three points. So if you, from the, uh, the, the first initial step, so you can see uh, A2, it is not at the boundary of the, uh, of the Zegel curve, right? Therefore, you want to update this uh, Robin constant L2. How? So you just increase L, uh, the, the rubbing, uh, the L2, then you can see uh, A2 is on the, on the boundary of um, the, the two uh, boundary regions. So this uh, step, we, we say it is, uh, um, uh, we, we call it is because A2 is updated by A1 in this case. So, so we say uh, we have to remember this step. We, we, we say the chain of A1 that's for uh, one to zero because a, a, for the initial condition, A1 is fine. So we say one it goes to zero, that's a chain of A1. And also chain of A3 is same, three to zero. But because of A2 is updated by A1, therefore we say the chain of A2, it is two, to one to zero. We have to remember these steps, okay? So you can imagine if you have, if you, this is just the for three, three points, right? If you put more points, then you have to repeat this step one by one. Uh, because we have finite number of uh, the, the points, therefore at most you update new steps, you obtain the, uh, the set of the Robin constant. So that's the way we uh, obtain the multiple uh, Zegel curves. Um, so the next picture, that's for uh, just a uh, uh, more complicated result. So if you have uh, some A, AJs is fixed and your Zegel curves is fixed, okay? So uh, in our work, we only consider the generic case. So non-generic case, that's the right-hand side. I, I put a, a star. So uh, generic cases for any AJ, it is adjacent to two domains. So it could be uh, adjacent to a uh, omega one, omega zero. It could be uh, adjacent to omega J and omega K. But for the right-hand side, it is non-generic case because I have the A star, it is adjacent to four different uh, uh, region, right? So we only uh, treat uh, the um, generic case. So if you, but by dealing with the new equal to one case, we want to um, modify our uh, oriented contour gamma by the multiple Zegel curves. But for now, we cannot do that because you can see our multiple Zegel curves, they are some crazy uh, curves. You cannot just choose uh, the, the, the gamma, it is uh, including uh, zero and all the AJs. Okay, so we, we, we cannot do that. And how to, how to do, how to handle this? Therefore, uh, we introduce um, the equivalence between uh, orthogonal polynomial, the plain orthogonal polynomial and multiple orthogonal polynomial. I, I think in USF, we're familiar with a meet per day approximation. So uh, this is uh, something related to that. So this is related to uh, type two 
emit per day approximation. So we have the multiple Zego curves. So here we define n as a vector, the index vector. So we have n1, n2, and n in mu. They are non-negative integers. And also we define pn vector. It is the monic, uh, monic polynomials of degree n. And n is the summation of the, all the index nj's. So this uh, polynomial satisfy the following orthogonality conditions. And uh, uh, the gamma, it is uh, similar as uh, enclosing all the other points. And so we have the measure mu j. And uh, uh, k is from 0 to nj minus 1, and j is from 1 to mu. Okay, so mu j, we have the uh, integral representation, and uh, we have the uh, delta kj here. Uh, therefore, for, for different j, we have a different formula. Therefore, we have new different measures. Okay. So if you see uh, the, the, the orthogonal polynomial that's with respect to one measure, right? But for here, because the with respect to new different measures, so therefore we call it uh, multiple orthogonal polynomial. What is the contour here? Still just one contour fixed and it's the... Um... Uh, can you repeat? What is the contour? Uh, ah, the contour same. It is uh, uh, including zero and uh, all the ages. Yes. Okay, I see. So it's one contour and multiple weights or multiple yes. different things that, you're, that are orthogonal with respect to. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. So th then we have different measures, and then this is uh, the equivalence between planar orthogonal polynomial and pipe two multiple orthogonal polynomial. And at this moment, we can set up our Riemann Hilbert problem. So we have psi of z, that's the, uh, the, the major, like the vector, the, the, the row vector. And then we have the jump condition. It is not on the whole uh, uh, Zegel curves, it is only for the union of all the. Uh, gamma j zero. I will mention by the next figures. Okay, so it is a uh, part of the multiple Zego curves, and uh, because of we mentioned our WZ, we have a lot of branch cuts, right? So we have additional jump along the branch cuts. Okay, so we have two different jumps, and also we have the symptotical behavior. Uh, other than that, that's the holomorphic uh, matrix function, and we have the one way entry that's exactly the orthogonal polynomials. What does the uh, minus plus mean in the second jump? Ah, that's uh, because you have the branch cuts, right? You have the branch cut, oh. then you have the area, right? Then you have to left hand side, right hand side. Yes. Yeah, this is B, that's the branch cut. Yeah. Okay. 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 So uh, I'm not sure whether, uh, uh, so normally if you see Riemann Hilbert uh, problem, people talk about two by two, right? But for here, it is not two by two because if you knew greater than one, then, then that's the high dimensional Riemann Hilbert problem. And uh, I also skip the technical details. <laughs> So let's go to uh, uh, the, 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 the figures. So if you, if you see the figures, so, so this is uh, the, the unit disk, and inside we have the Zego curves. So we have A1, A2, 3, and 4. Okay. So our contour is chosen by uh, the union of the gamma uh, J0. So gamma J0 means this contour is adjacent to omega j and omega zero. So only the outside. So we, uh, uh, we go, uh, go from A1 and uh, avoid the branch cuts and go back to A1. So that's the, the control we choose. And also inside, we have, because we have the branch cuts, right? So that's why we have the, the, the jump along the branch cut. So this is the explain the oriented contour and uh, uh, the jump conditions. So, so if you understand uh, the oriented contour, understand the jump conditions, then we would like to do the uh, nonlinear sphere descent, right? So you want to uh, you want to do a, a lot of transformations and then use the small norm theory and to obtain the final result. Okay. So then, um, uh, so uh, yes. So this works for the non-generic case? Uh, this is, uh, uh, for, for non-generic case, I think that will be similar. But we just don't want to repeat every step. Uh, we, we have the result and the numerical, we, we check that. For, for non-generic case, it's still okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
So then uh, we obtain the final results. So we say as n goes through infinity and the, the scaling limit is n over n equal to one. So you don't need to think about the difference between small and the capital N. And then the polynomial PN satisfy the following uh, uh, strong syntactics. Okay. So in omega zero, we have one formula and in every omega j, we have different uh, formula. So uh, in the formula of omega j, I have to mention uh, the chain of j that's a constant with respect to the chain of a j. As, as, as I mentioned, when, when we constructed the multiple Zeko curves, we have to update uh, several points. Therefore, this chain of j are related to the uh, chain j is a constant uh, with respect to the chain of a j. Okay, so this is just some constant. And also you may mention I put the uh, Wj of z. So what is Wj of z? So Wj of z and the W of z, they have the same formula. So the, the, the formula, it is uh, the product of z minus aj to power cj. And the difference is we choose a different branch cost for Wj of z. Okay, so I just use the figure, the figure to explain what is the W of Z, the branch cut, what is the branch cut for W uh, one of Z. So if we have three points, so uh, the, uh, the, 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 the B1, B2, and the B3, that's a branch cut for W of Z. And the red rays, uh, the B1, B21 and the B31, they are the branch cuts for W1 of Z. Okay, so you, you can uh, so you can imagine. So we have that, that's what we call the sub branch. So if you have the Riemann Hilbert and then you put a lot of branch cuts at the same time, you have a lot of sub branches. Therefore, you you also have to do the nonlinear speed descent, right? So all all these things you uh, after you finish every ana uh, all, all the analysis, then you obtain the final result. Okay. So this is for the uh, sub branch, and as I mentioned from the new equal to one case, and locally we have some special function, right? Uh, for uh, post critical, we talk about it is related to. Uh, some uh, Cauchy transform of some function. And the, similarly, we have uh, the, the similar result. So locally, so if uh, AJ, that's on the um, boundary of omega J and omega K and K not equal to J and inside the small disk of AJ, we have this formula. And this FCJ that's related to some uh, uh, Cauchy transform and uh, the prefactor AK it is different uh, if it is in omega zero and in omega one, omega two, then there are different uh, formula. And also we have the chain of K and the WK of Z. It is much more complicated formula. And in the uh, Cauchy transform, the integral contour, it is from negative infinity and uh, go around the zero and go back to negative infinity. So this is uh, for the uh, final result for the strong syntactics. okay. Uh, this is basically what I uh, uh, plan for today, but I want to, uh, okay, we have one, we have three more pictures. So this picture, it is local zeros. So we have CJ equal to negative 0 0.5, CJ equal to one or two. So locally you can see if it is negative, so that would be attract some uh, charges. So if it is equal to one, then all the particles are on the vertical line. And if it is greater than two, so that will repel other uh, charges. Okay, but, uh, but I want to mention a little bit for the partition functions. Okay, so this is the new results. So we, we talk about uh, strong syntactics, and we, I also mentioned about, uh, we study strong syntactics of our solar polynomial because we want to study the uh, Coulomb particles. So if you still remember our probability distribution, we have the uh, normalization constant Zn, right? Without knowing anything, the, uh, the 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 partition function, you cannot do like do the statistic uh, to to do the integral, right? Because the constant you don't know. So therefore, we study the partition function. Uh, th this partition function for new equal to one case, it was obtained by Webb and Wang in uh, let me see what where, which year in, in two thousand eighteen. And later on, uh, uh, and then at uh, 
their paper, they also mention a uh, conjecture for a uh, new greater than one case, but uh, uh, they say at that moment, they cannot do it. And uh, later on in 2019, they are not in the same, they also work on the partition function and they proved the result for new equal to two case, but they, they, they did new equal to two case, but they have to, ch have to choose the C1 and the C2, they are integer or one, at least one of them, it is integer. But for here, because we, uh, we do the analysis to the general case for all the CJs are non-integer, therefore we can obtain the, we can prove the, uh, I have to say it is a part of the conjecture, okay? So we work on the three, uh, three cases. The first one we say uh, all the AJs are isolated. So if it is separate, then we obtain this result. So, uh, and also we work on the second case, it is for AJ and the AKR margin. So it is, if it is two of the charges are close, right? So if you do the uh, riemann hilbert to the analysis, then you, you do the small disk, then you have two, two, two you, you have one disk, but you have two singularities inside, right? So this part is a little bit different with the isolated case. Uh, so, uh, and also I mentioned that we have M11. Uh, so M11, that's some, some, something related to Pandeva 5 for merging case. And also we, are, we can, uh, we can uh, deal with uh, for the AJ is on the boundary of the disk. So when AJ on the boundary of disk, this M11, so we have the similar formula, but M11 is uh, related to Pandeva 4. And uh, how, how do we obtain this? I just quickly uh, describe what we did. So we define two different uh, uh, moment metrics. So the one it is related to a small DN and uh, another is related to capital DN. So capital DN, that's the moment related to the area integral. Uh, okay, so that's the related to planar orthogonal polynomial. And the small dn that's related to the uh, um, multiple orthogonal polynomials. Our Riemann Hilbert that's hold for the um, multiple orthogonal polynomials, right? And then we proved the equivalence uh, between um, the, the, these two moments. And we say that exists a unique constant matrix An such that uh, small dn equal to an multiply capital dn. And the capital dn, that's related to partition function. But the small, d, the small dn, we, obtain, we can obtain from the similar calculation for Riemann Hilbert. And the an is known. So if we know small dn and the capital an, therefore we can calculate to the capital dn. And capital dn we, is related to partition function. That's why we can obtain, uh, we, we can um, prove the conjecture. Okay, so this is uh, uh, what we did. Uh, um, uh, so today I talk about uh, uh, how do we uh, how how do we uh, um, obtain the strong symptotics for orthogonal polynomials and also for multiple orthogonal polynomials. And then I also mentioned about the partition functions part. So uh, this is all the references. The first three uh, you can find online, and the last one it is not finished yet. Okay. So thank you for your attention. I don't know how to end the talk. So do we clap or what do we do? Um, but thank you so much. Um, okay. So does anyone have any questions? Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. At all. So. <laughs> Can we, can we back to the RHP? Yeah, so you said that you can apply the Stephen descent, but uh, is this RHP like uh, you have uh, oscillating? Oscillating, uh, I think uh, oscillating that's the uh, Basic idea to do the nonlinear speed descent, right? Yeah. But for here we do. Um, <clears throat> but for here we, I think uh, that's containing in the uh, construction of phi. So uh, it is on the phi. We yeah, because uh, 
uh, normally nobody asks the technical details, so therefore I, I, I don't do, I don't prepare anything related to that. But, but yes, so uh, uh, if I, I say about the phi function, when we define this, why you define this, right? So this is based on the, uh, uh, um, like a G function transform. So we, you, you have uh, your uh, Riemann Hilbert, right? So you have your Riemann Hilbert, and then uh, b because you want to apply the small norms here, right? But, but for here, it is not close to identity yet. Therefore, you construct some G function transform. Therefore, you can obtain some Riemann Hilbert close to small norm. Yeah, I think the 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 the, the idea is contained in the uh, G function transformation. Yes. So this G function is solution to vector equilibrium problem, or what is the uh, yes, yeah, so you can understand in that. So it's like, uh, so when we talk about uh, uh, the, uh, the droplets, and so that's the uh, that's a support of the equivalent measure, right? So you have to, I think you understand that. So you have the functional and then you obtain the equivalent measure. And that's the, the, the where, uh, that's a droplet. So droplet, so that's the support of the uh, equivalent measure. Yes, and because we have the two dimensional, right? So therefore we have uh, what we call Zegel curve and the, the droplet. So the relation between Zegel curve, so Zegel curve, you can understand that it is a one dimensional uh, equivalent measure and uh, a droplet to the support of the two dimensional uh, uh, equivalent measure. So uh, the relation is when the outside of the droplet, so these two measures generate the same logarithmic potential. Yes. Okay. So a question about that action. So the um, the two dimensional measure is has constant density. Yeah. Um, constant on constant yeah. density. Uh, yes. I, does I the one dimensional measure, or is it? How does the one dimensional? What does the density look like? Uh, I. Or is see. it hard to say? I think it is uh, constant on the uh, on the. And the drop as a square root of, and so uh, I'm not sure about this. Let me see. Because this will tell you density of zeros, yeah? Um, or it will tell you density of zeros in the scaling limit, I think. And I, I think you can show the this three dimensional uh, graph of this phi, right? Yeah, there. So the density is given by the difference of the slope. I see, okay. So it's like, um. So if you look at the, the part where the two planes meet, like in the middle, with the green plane and blue plane meets, there of course the density is the same because the, the discontinuity of the slope is the same. Okay, so it's like a linear kind of density kind of thing. I mean, it'll, it'll be, um. <laughs> This is just constant density over that line. The line density is constant. Line density is constant. So, but it's a different constant in each line, or what? Yeah, different constant in each line. Okay. Okay, that's interesting. Okay. So, um, any other questions? If not, um. Well, let's thank our speaker one more time. Okay, thank you. Um, and next week, I guess we don't technically have a speaker yet. Um, <laughs> any volunteers? <laughs> we will see. Yeah. Uh, well, I could do something if you don't have, um, you know. Okay. Um, no, well, no, no, hold on. Next week, right? Yeah. Uh, Friday, no. right? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Yeah. Friday, right? Friday this time. Yeah, Friday this time. Okay. Yeah, I will. If if you're not like, um, you have any subject that really, um, you have something like the restrictions of the subjects talking, but no? Yeah, we're pretty loose. Uh, oh, okay. Okay, so I could do something. Yeah, I could. Okay, so. Um, so I'll send you the abstract, like, probably later this weekend. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so let's finish.
Hey, good job, bye. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, your okay, background so, uh, is Lawrence. Uh, something related to that, right, Buckley? Uh, class. <laughs> uh, yes, from my class. Yeah. So, how, how's your life in Copenhagen? That's um. So, because I work from home, so I don't I, I don't have much life in. Copenhagen. I just work from home from Belgium and to Copenhagen. I still work from home. There's two different homes, but <laughs> I stay at home anyway. <laughs> so I don't have a lot of time. Is it to colder work. now? It is colder. It is colder. Yeah, now it is like a fall, fall uh, degree. I don't know how to translate to, to American. Well, it's fall it's yeah, it is free. You don't know how to translate into freedom units? Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, I know what the numbers are. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm curious who this number is. <laughs> now we know. I got to switch it up every time I see you, Nathan. I was curious. Now I know. Yes. Well, next time, next time uh, you may not. <laughs> I'll just assume next time it's you. Well. What have you been up to, Brittany? You've been doing anything fun recently? Oh, I I don't know. It depends on what con what constitutes fun for you. <laughs> no, the short answer is no. <laughs> what about you guys? Sitting around. <laughs> yeah. Bunch of nerds. Yeah, no. Uh, it's a real drag. Next semester is all online already. They declared again. I think so. Um, yeah. I talked about it. He says, "I wonder how long this is going to go on for." Dude, I I, I mean, don't know. I mean, clear that it has to, but after that, I don't know. I mean, uh, I don't know how pandemics work. So. Yeah. Oh my god. Well. Have you heard more of Radovan? Uh, I talked to him. Was that yesterday or two days ago? Um. We talked for a while. Um, he disappeared finally, all the time. Finally, a, a time to talk. Yeah, but um, he's 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 sort of back. So okay. that's good. That's good. Yeah. Did what classes are you guys taking next semester? Um, I don't know. Oh. Okay. Bye. <laughs> what about that guy? Actually, um, uh, uh, so I asked Will to email Bias about um the conflict with Dima's class.